This is a beautiful space. You've been kind enough to let us use your pad. Thank you for allowing us to be here. My pleasure. Uh, one of the reasons uh, we decided to put this together was because uh, you have an interest in a pantheon of, uh, of areas. And we have an interesting one today, which is we're going to talk about batteries and specifically batteries in electric cars. And uh, I called around to my friends and I realized one of my friends was the designer of the Tesla. And in fact, it got started in your garage, correct? Yes, it started out in a little company in San Dimas called AC Propulsion. We began the conversion process mm -hmm. to take it from a lead battery, which was, you know, frankly, last century technology, to something that had real energy density and a lot less mass. And in doing so, we took it from being a fairly peppy sports car to something that really nothing under a million dollars can touch. When we started this, I mean, honestly, you'd, you'd go to people and you'd say, tell me about electric cars. And they'd say basically three things. They'd say, eh, they're not very exciting. They don't go very fast, and they don't go very far. I think we put that to bed. Well, so you're free to ask him anything you wish, because he can tell, he can answer anything. Okay, so are there, as far as you know, any inherent limitations to battery technology? Like, will batteries, will the technology advance to such a point where you'll have battery-powered planes, battery-powered rocket ships? Like, will there be enough available power, or is there some sort of glass ceiling that battery technology will never get past? The short answer is there is a limit. If you look at, to, by way of explanation, if you look at gasoline, you take gasoline, you react it with oxygen, you burn it. Mm -hmm. You're breaking chemical bonds apart, all of them basically. That's kind of one limit to the system. You're destroying it. Mm -hmm. If you're going to keep enough of the bonds to keep the structure of the material together, then you've got something that's a candidate for a battery. And so the, the upper limit for battery energy densities isn't clearly defined, but it's, it's below the limit of destructive irreversible chemistries. So a sort of hypothetical theoretical question. Um, I like to think it's the end of the 19th century and we're sitting around, because we built a time machine going back to the 19th century. As one does. And we, there's a contest. There's like the X Prize 19th century, which is the fastest way to get from London to San Francisco. And so all the entrants are like, oh, a balloon, and then a really fast train. Um, and that's about, that's in terms of what people could conceive of, that was it. Um, technological limitations now, I think it's quite fascinating to say like in a hundred years hence, how will people look back at those restrictions? And I'm just fascinated when it comes like to battery technology, like a hundred years from now, will battery technicians be sitting around saying like, yep, we've just built a slightly better battery or will they be like, oh, this is what we needed to do to make batteries that are more powerful to like a scale of like a hundred or a thousand. So let me answer this by first asking you a question. I like questions. When you set out to create a piece of art, do you try to make something that is safe and that is very similar to something you've already done? Or do you go for the moon? Uh, it all depends. At least in the world of music and art, and also I guess in the world of technology, a lot of progress is accidental and really hard to judge while it's happening. You know, like, who, like for example, if, if, it, if we built our time machine again, went back to 1974 to the birth of hip hop, no one would have pointed to the South Bronx and said what they're creating is a musical idiom which will go on to span the globe, change the world, and generate a trillion dollars in music sales. It'd been like, it's just some kids playing records in a park, you know. The same applies to technology. Mm -hmm. And so you've got scientists who are handicapped by their need to get funding from agencies that are going to hand something to their peers. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a few that are off in left field. Most of them, it's not gonna bear fruit. But if you want to find something new, and the breakthroughs are what is going to drive the real motion, the leaps, not just the study. The study stuff's very important. Mm -hmm. But the leaps are the things that are remembered in history. And those come from people, typically, who are looking... I thought you were going to say typically who are taking psychedelic drugs. But, yeah. <laughs> there's, right. there's, there's, there's precedent for that it, as well. But they might as well be, because to do something like that, you have to look where other people are not looking, look where people are typically not 
encouraging mm -hmm. you. They're actively discouraging you in some cases. But you have to have some idea, some vision that is guiding your creativity and your exploration. And that can lead to breakthroughs. Just like in the music industry, we have the same thing in the scientific industry, which is things that start in somebody's garage. Who would mm -hmm. have thought that an entire computer generation would have started in someone's garage? Wozniak. Yeah. And suddenly, now it's corporation. Yeah. It's creativity. It is actually a creative process. And then the way in which almost like cognition catches up with that. You know, like the stuff that to us just seems commonplace and normal. I mean, like, we're sit we're like, not to sound like all crazy in new age, but like, right now we're bathed in unspeakable miracles. Yes. Meaning like, light bulbs. Yes. A single light bulb is mind-boggling. I mean, I think it's almost one of like, human being shortcomings is just viewing the miraculous as mundane and commonplace. Always taking everything for granted immediately. Do you feel like you could build a battery now? Um, absolutely not. Um, I mean, I have a better understanding of battery technology than I had, say, 15 minutes ago. Excellent. So that's good. I still don't want to quit my day job and go work at a battery factory. Yeah, they're, they're, they're harsh places. Yeah.